So good to have each and every one of you here in the house of the Lord this morning. What a great day it is that the Lord has blessed us with today. I love waking up in the morning and while I'm making the coffee, I can hear the birds singing praises unto God. What a way to start the day by praising Him and worshiping Him. What a way to start our week by worshiping Him and praising Him. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning as we start our service. We have some that are out sick this morning that we want to remember them in prayer. Uh, that the Lord would touch their bodies and give them the healing that they need. We want to remember Roger. The Lord would touch him and Shay. That the Lord would touch her body and yes. and and uh, Jeannie. That the Lord would touch her body as well this morning. Yes. Praise God. And Vicky. Yes, yeah, she's she woke up. She got three boils. We used to call them rats. That's yeah, her. Well, she's got three of them that popped up. Oh, bless her heart. Yes, and that's that's painful. So we want to remember her. Yeah, she usually has to have a glance. You know, go to doctor. Let's go, Lord, in prayer as we begin our service this morning. Our gracious God of heaven, we love you and we thank you for this day, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy and your goodness. And I'm asking you this day, Lord God of heaven, as we open this service to come into this place and meet with us as we open our hearts to you. Lord, you said that wherever we gather together in your name that you would be in the midst of us. And when we come together in praise and worship and adoration, we build the place for you to dwell in our midst. And, and that's what we've come here this morning to do, Lord, is to worship you, to praise you, to bring you glory and honor. And my Lord God of heaven, to you, that your glory and your presence fill this place. My Lord God of heaven, I pray in such a way that this building radiates and glows with your glory. Lord, I pray that you would remember those that we just spoke of that are in need of a healing touch of their body. Remember so many others today, Lord God, that are, that, that are in need of, of your healing touch and your provision and your comfort and your strength and so much more. Lord God, we worship you today and we praise you in this place in Jesus' name. Amen.
praise the Lord. surprise us, but not God, That's right. because he loves us so much, and we're his children, Amen. and you as a parent, wouldn't you do anything for your child? Yes. That's how God is. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy
hallelujah forevermore. Hallelujah. Has the Lord been good to you? Yes. Has he blessed you? Yes. Has he kept you? Yes. Provided for us, met our needs, comforted us, strengthened us, healed us, and so much more. Yes. But you know what? The best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord. Because the word tells us that I have not seen nor ear heard the nor the things that God has prepared for the, those that love him. Amen. He's got so much more for us yes. than what we can even comprehend of his goodness and his mercy that comes into our life Amen. every day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> have a word that the Lord has laid on my heart for today. Being certain in these uncertain times. Being certain in these uncertain times. See, I hear a lot of people talking today about, boy, we're just living in a time of uncertainty. And for some, that may be the truth. But let me hear me when I tell you this morning, I am certain. I am certain in these days that we're living today. First of all, let me clarify before I go any farther. What do I mean by saying that we are certain? According to the dictionary, to be certain of something means for something to be known for sure. It's a positive thing. It's a positive fact. Something that is established beyond any doubt whatsoever. Let me say this this morning, that there are a lot of people today that live in a state of uncertainty. Many today are living in a state of fear. They're living in a state of almost panic sometimes because they're not, their foundation is in the wrong place. Can I tell you that there are the rumblings of the news reports, if we're not careful, can put a fear in our hearts and an uncertainty in our spirits and in our minds if we're not careful? Amen. But I want to tell you something. When you're on the right foundation, yes. it doesn't really bother you. Amen. It doesn't really trouble you. Oh, I am concerned. I am very concerned about our nation. I am very concerned about people. I am very concerned about a lot of things today. But then hear me when I say with a broken heart. And I don't have any pleasure in saying this. But can I tell you today that if this nation keeps going in the direction that we're going, I am certain that without any shadow of a doubt that we are fast becoming a third world socialist nation. Amen. How can you say that, Pastor? Because I'm going to tell you, well, for one thing, we have become a nation of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Bear with me. We have our holidays like 4th of July, like Memorial Day. And just a couple of days ago, we were, we were remembering D-Day. And we have these times of, uh, of commemoration where we remember our, the, 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 the price that was paid for our liberty and our freedoms as Americans. And it's, I'm glad we can. And I'm glad we still do. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm thankful for these. But at the same time, as we supposedly reflect and remember on all these things, we sit idly by and we are allowing our liberties and our freedoms to be robbed and stripped from us before our very eyes and we don't lift our hand to do one thing about it. Amen. We don't do anything. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get involved. Well, there's nothing I can do. My friend, let me tell you, there's a lot that we can do and I'm not talking about acts of violence. Can I tell you, there's a lot that we can do. For one thing, we can bind together and begin to pray. Yes, amen. One thing, we can vote. Not vote for a party, but vote for the person 
who, who has the right platform at their own yeah. that's going to take this nation back to God yeah. rather than take it in the direction that it's going. Amen. You know, yes. can I tell you something? For a nation, for the most part, it grieves me and it breaks my heart to have to say this, but for the most part, our nation has forgotten and forsaken God. Yes. We have forsaken the ways of God. We have forsaken the worship of God, and we have forsaken the respect of God. Yes. And it grieves my heart to have to say that this morning, yes. but it's the truth. And because of this, uh, can I tell you something? Uh, we tell God with many ways, uh, not just with our words, uh, but with our attitudes and with our actions and our lifestyle. We're telling God that you're not important to me. That you know that, that I can do it without you. I don't need you. And, le and so forth and so on. And my friend, let me tell you something. When we begin to do this, uh, we are headed for disaster. History records this. Yes. History books. The if they still teach history in school like they used to when I was going to school, we can learn a lot from history. Amen. If they teach the truth of history. Amen. And the Bible, one of the greatest history books that has ever been written is the Bible. Yes. Because I want to tell you something. We can learn We can um, some very valuable lessons that we learn from the history of God's Word. We are living in a time today of what Paul wrote to the Roman church in Romans 1 and 28 when he said of people that no longer want to retain God in their knowledge. Mm. One translation of this says they refuse to have God in their knowledge. What does it mean? To retain means to hold on to, to keep, to, uh, to, to grasp. To, it goes beyond just acknowledging that there is a God. It goes on to just to, 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 to say, well, I believe that there is a God. But I'm going to tell you something. It means that we hold on to God's word. We put a value on God. We put a price tag, so to speak, on how much he, and how much he, we value God. Let me ask a question this morning. How much do you value God? How much do you value his word? How much do you value the cross of Calvary where he sent his only begotten son that who would ever believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life? When he could have sent him into this world to condemn this world, he sent him into this world that through him this world might be saved. How much value do we put on that? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. How much value? Oh, I want to tell you something. My friend, let me tell you. World history teaches us that when a nation begins to devalue God. Yes. They head for disaster. In the Old Testament, we read of Israel time and time and time and time again. They would have a king come in that, that worshiped God wholly, completely, fully. And the nation would prosper. The nation would be blessed. The economy would come up. There would be peace from their enemies around them. There would be goodness around them. And it seemed like that would last for just a few years. And then maybe the next king that come along, he didn't do that. He had another agenda. And he began to embrace other gods and began to build idols and shrines and temples to pagan gods. Began to what we, we often read in the, in the Old Testament about the, the groves and the high places, meaning things like I just spoke of. And as they began to embrace these things and they began to forsake God and begin to turn their back on God time after time after time after time again the next thing you know the economy would collapse the next thing you know famine would hit the nation disaster would hit the nation the next thing you know the enemies would rise up against them and overtake them and put them in slavery Amen. without time it happened time and time again well you would think after a little bit they'd catch on Hello? Wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. You would think after a little bit they would catch on. Well, you know, hey, when we serve God, things go good. But when we forsake God, look how things go. 
Well, you know, you would think people would learn the same thing today. You would think people, and I'm going to tell you something, I say this for a reason, for a purpose at one time. As I look around this sanctuary this morning, I see the age of, uh, 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 of our people here. And we grew up and from childhood up as the Christian nation of the world. We were the Christian nation. This nation was founded on the principle of one God. Amen. You know, one God. Mm -hmm. And we served one nation under God. And God was the foundation of our law. He was the foundation of the uh, 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 of everything we did. And we, this nation was blessed above any other nation of the world while we were that way. But in recent years, that's not the case. In recent years, we have forgotten God. We have forsaken God. We have allowed uh, false gods, false temples, false worship. Uh, to come in and, and, and come into the to our nation and overtake our nation to where we are no longer one nation under God. We are one nation under many gods. Amen. And look at the mess we're in and look at where we're headed. Yes. We're headed for disaster, people. Mm. I'm not trying to be a, pro, a, a preacher of gloom and doom, but as a prophet of God this morning, I am giving a warning. That if we don't do something and we don't do, we, if we don't change, yeah. if the church doesn't change. See, we can't expect Washington, D.C. to bail us out. Amen. Because Washington, D.C. is not going to bail us out. Amen. Who's going to bail us out? It's going to be the church of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. It's going to be the church of Jesus Christ yes. that's going to turn this nation around. It's going to be the church of Jesus Christ that's going to make a difference and bring this nation back again. You know, what happens when people no longer, when they no longer want to worship God, when they no longer have a value of God? The second part of Romans 1 and 28 says God will give them over to a reprobate mind. In other words, he will get to a place to where he will deal with them and he will try to speak to them and try to reason with them through the Holy Spirit for such a time. And then finally, God will say, okay, I'm going to step back and let you have what you want. And can I tell you something? They'll get what they want, but what they want ain't what they want. Hello? Mm -hmm. They get what they want, but what they want ain't going to be what they want. Amen. Because what they're going to get is going to be disaster and calamity. It's going to be heartache and sorrow and bondage yes. and captivity. But can I tell you something? If we still put a value on God, if we still place a value on him. See, I still believe that there's hope for America. Yes, amen. Hear what I'm saying. I still, but people, I heard someone say just very recently, well, America's gone too far. There's no hope for America. Can I tell you, oh, there God. is hope for America. Yes. One verse of scripture right there, that that was the only verse, but it's not. That one verse of scripture right there tells us that there's hope for America yes. when it says, if my people, how many know that's the church? Yes. If my people, the church, if we will humble ourselves and, and pray and seek his face and repent and turn back to God wholly and completely, Give ourselves over to him wholly and completely. He knows he says that he will heal from heaven. He will forgive our sin and heal our land. Yes. My friend, let me tell you, there's hope for healing today. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. If we put a value on God. If we make him a priority once again in our lives. I believe this so much. But that's one of the reasons why I do what I, what I do almost daily. That's why you get those annoying texts from me every morning that some of you read, some of you may not. That's why you get the, the links to our services. Some of you watch, some of you may not. It's because I want to do everything I can to as many people as I can to point them to Jesus Christ. To point them to to point them to the cross, to point them to the finished work of Calvary so that just like I am, they too can become certain. Amen. Become certain. See, what we need is we need revival in America. Yes, amen. 
I'm not talking about a meeting where we hang up a banner or hang up a sign and we pay an itinerary preacher to come by and preach a few messages out of his briefcase that we've never heard before that stir our hearts and it makes us excited and it generates some excitement for a day or two and then once the, once the itinerary evangelist is gone, then we go back to business as usual. That's not what we need. Amen. Can I tell you what we need is we need the fire of God to fall yes. like his hit on Mount Carmel yes. the day Amen. that Elijah prayed and fire fell from heaven yes. and it turned the people's heart back to God. Yes. Can Amen. I tell you, we need the yes. fire of God to fall like it did yes. on the day of Pentecost when a uh, uh, 120 people, yes. just 120 yes. people yes. were in a room in yes. prayer. Yes. My friend, and all of a sudden there came a fire yes. from heaven yes. that began to set upon them and they were all baptized in the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit yes. of God yes. gave them the utterance and it gave birth to what we know today as the church and the church began to grow and the church began to spread and the church began to turn this world yes. upside yes. down yes. and forever change. Yes. Amen. We need the fire of God to fall again in America yes. like it did in the late 1800s, early 1900s yes. to where it began over in the, in the hills of Carolina and, and, and in that area in, in the mountain region and spread to California and began to spread across this nation and began to spread around the world when a, fire, when a revival of holiness began to break out and once again people began to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and it began to grow my friend let me tell you we need a revival of holiness yes. because I'm here to tell you today I am certain what the word of God teaches that holiness is God's standard of living for his people I am certain that what the word of God tells us that without holiness no man's going to see the Lord what is holiness pastor holiness is Christ like living yes. amen Holiness is Christ-like living. Yes. We tell you today, in these beginning, what Philippians 2 and 5 tells us, to let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. We need to get our minds focused on Jesus. Yes. And begin to study Jesus. Mm. And begin to read Jesus. Mm. And begin to follow Jesus. And begin to think like Jesus. What happens when you begin to think like Jesus thinks? Oh, then you begin to talk like Jesus talked. Hello? My, 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 oh my, help me, Holy Ghost. So that I don't give trouble what I'm going to say. But how much would a, our culture be changed if people began to talk more like Jesus than talk like the devil? How much more would a church be changed if Christians began to talk like Jesus talked rather than talk like the devil talked? Amen. Hello? Amen. We begin to talk like Jesus. Amen. We begin to think like Jesus. We get the heart of Jesus. We get the hands of Jesus. We get the feet of Jesus. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the feet of Jesus that would carry him to a well, to a woman in a, in a little city of Shikar. Oh, my God, a Samaritan woman who, who was, an, as far as he and you was concerned, was to be an outcast. You know that, that you heard me preach on the, 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 the bigotry and the hatred between the Jews and the Samaritans, but I will tell you, when he had the mind of Christ, he had the heart of Christ, he had the words of Christ, he had the hands of Christ, he had the feet of Christ, he went out of his way to go to a woman that was a social outcast. Five times she had been married and had been thrown aside like a piece of garbage. Five times and now was living with a man was more than his, nothing more than a, than a concubine to him. Just something he got sexual pleasure and gratification from and used her for a slave and she was a social reject in her community. But can I tell you, he went out of his way to go to her and give her a word that brought her eternal life. Amen. Yes, yes thank you, Lord. Went out of his way to go to a demonic hole that was living in the graveyard among the tombs and among the yes. dead to release him 
and yes. set him free yes. from the demonic oppression. Yes. My Lord God, when we put on the mind of Christ and we began to put on the heart, we let the mind of Christ penetrate our thoughts, penetrate our mind, get down into our heart, get through our vocal cords into coming out of our mouth, coming out of our hands, coming out of our feet. My friend, let me tell you, then we'll begin to see America change Amen. for the good. Amen. Yes. See, I am convinced, and I'm certain, that if America repents, yes. that if America repents, let me, let, me, let me get a little more clear on that. Before America is going to repent, the church is going to have to repent. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. And when the church repents, yes. who's the church? We are. We are. Mm -hmm. That means there's some stuff in us we got to get rid of. That means there's some stuff in us we got to get rid of. Yes. You need to be here on Wednesday night for Celebrate Recovery. Because see, that's what we're working on. We're, getting, we're, 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 we're working on getting rid of some of the things in our heart, in our life, in our past that are holding us down right now. That are keeping us back from being able to, to walk in the liberty and the fullness and the freedom that Jesus Christ has for us Amen. today. But can I tell you, when we repent and turn to God completely, yes. can I tell you, it can't be God and something else. Hello? Amen. It can't be God and my job. It can't be God and even my family. It can't be God and even my wife, as much as I love that precious daughter right there, and as much as she means to me. And I want to tell you something. It's got to be me and him. Oh, my yes. Lord. It's got to be me. But you know what? It's the same with her. Yes. It can't be um, me and God in her life. It's got to be him first. Yes. Amen. And when Amen. he's first and he's foremost, can I tell you something? All these other things will fall into place like they're supposed to. Yes. We've got to the place where we're trying to put God and something else. Oh, we want to we, we want to make the foolish mistake that Solomon made. The wisest man that ever lived other than Jesus Christ became foolish when he thought that, that he could he could go against what God told him about not marrying the pagan women from other cultures because it would defile their worship. Yes. So Solomon began to marry all these strange women from other cultures and they, and they all had different gods that they served and in order to please his wives he began to build temples and shrines yes. and places of worship to them. And he, he began to go to church with them. Yes. When it, and he began to go worship with them with their gods. Uh, and oh, I want to tell you, when it, when, when, and then finally, when he run the full circle and, and he come back to God's house, God wasn't pleased with him. Yes. Can I tell you something? We've got to turn to him completely. Yes. Amen. There are some groves. There are some high places. There are some things that we need to tear down, some temples that we need to tear down, some altars that we need to tear down, some things we need to get rid of. We need to clean our hearts, clean our hearts, clean our homes, clean our cars, clean everything about us to get rid of anything because it can be only me and God. Yes. Amen. Me and God. He said, I am a jealous God and I will have no other God before me. Amen. Amen. And when we do this, the Lord will heal Amen. our nation. Amen. But I am certain if we don't, there's some troublesome times ahead. There are some troublesome times. Amen. I don't know about you. I'm not the brightest candle in a box. But I don't like troublesome times. Amen. I like times of peace. Yes. I like times of of blessing. I like times where we can have relax and enjoy life and living. But I have a certainty in my heart this morning, church, for those who are faithful. You hear me what I'm saying? For those who that are retaining God in their value system. 
they put a high priority on number one who God is yes. they put a high priority on their relationship with him they put a high priority on his word they put a high priority on his worship they put a high priority on his work they put a high priority on his church because when they put God first and they value the things of God more than they value anything else. Can I tell you something? There are blessings that are they can enjoy. Amen. Those that are trying their best. Can I tell you something? That's all that the Lord expects of us is for us to try our best. To try our best to live for Him. To try our best to live a life that's pleasing to Him. To do our best to make him the priority of our life. Now let me say this before I go any farther. Nowhere in the Bible does it show us or teach us or tell us that there will be difficult times even for the most faithful of God's people. Unfortunately, we still live in a sinful world. We're seeing all around us. But can I tell you, if we had the time this morning... I could take through you through example after example after example that when difficult times and hard times came, how God was always, I said always, I said again always, faithful to his faithful people. Amen. See, I am certain yes. that when we're doing our best to be faithful to him, we can hold on to the promises of his word. I am certain that the promise of Isaiah 43 and 2 is ours when we're trying our best to be faithful to him. That when we pass through the waters, they'll be that he will be with us. And through the rivers, they'll not drown us. Then we walk through the fire, we'll not be burned. And when the flame will not kindle upon us, I am certain, my friend, beyond any shadow of a doubt, uh, that he is, he is a very present help uh, in time of trouble. Uh, oh, praise God. I'm so glad he's there when we need him the most, aren't you? Amen. But I'm so glad I don't have to wait till I'm in trouble to talk to him. I don't have to wait till I'm in trouble to call upon him. I can call upon him any time, day or night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And he's always right there to hear my voice and to respond to my cry. But I am so thankful that when troubles do come that I've got a helper. I've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother that he's always there. Oh, I'm so glad for what Isaiah tells us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a yes. standard against him. Amen. Oh, my. We have an adversary, the devil, that wants nothing more than to seek, kill, and destroy. But I'm so glad we've got a standard. Uh, what is the standard? It's the standard of God's Word. It is the standard of what God has said he will do for us, his people. And I am so glad today that when the enemy wants, wants to destroy us, he'll stand on the Word. He, we can stand on the Word and say because it is written yes. I will be victorious Amen. I'm so glad and I am certain today that we can stand on the promise of Matthew 28 and 20 where he says I am with you always yes. I am with you always yes. he'll be with you in Walmart he'll be with you on your job He'll be with you in your boat. He'll be with you in your car. He'll be with you in your home. He'll be with you wherever you make place for him and welcome his presence to be. He will be with Amen. you always. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Forever Amen. More. Thank you, Lord. I am certain of this. Just like he told the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient. My empowering presence is more than enough to take you through any difficulty yes. that you'll face in this life. Oh, I'm telling you something. I am certain 
that Jesus knows all about our troubles. He knows about our hardships. He knows about the trials. He knows about the loads that we carry. How can you know that, Pastor? Because of what the Word tells us in Isaiah 53 and 4, that he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Can I tell you, when he went to the cross, he had your heartache, he had your pain, he had your suffering, he had your sorrow, he had your broken heart, he had all of the things yes. that could come against us. The whole, he carried them on his yes. body as he went to the cross. Praise God, and because he came off of the cross and he came out of the grave and he's today at the right hand of God the Father to make intercession for us, we can be victorious today. Amen. And I am certain of that. Yes. I am certain. Because David said, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Now if that don't make you want to shout and dance, I don't know what will. Amen. David said, I've been young. Started out my life as a shepherd. Now I'm old. I'm the king. I'm sitting in the palace. And my body has gotten feeble. And I can't even warm myself. They had to have a young, a, a young maiden come uh, come look next to David and embrace him. And her body, he keep David warm. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. But you know one thing? I have never yeah. seen the Hallelujah. righteous forsaken. Oh, my God, he'll make a way for you where there seems to be no way. He'll be there when everybody else turns their back and runs and forsakes you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be there with you always. He said he has never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed. That means your children and your grandchildren. If you'll be faithful to God, God will make a way to even them can help make it through some difficult times. That's his word. Yes. Yes. Because I place such a value on who God is, I am certain that the promises of his word belong to me. Yes. Amen. Because I place a high value on his word, what his word has to say, I am certain that his word is alive in me. See, the thing about the Word of God, the, the Word of God is the eternal Word of God. It was there in the beginning when God began to speak, let there be, and there it was. That was the Word of God. And it goes, it will go out throughout eternity as the eternal Word of God, what God has spoken. But not only is it just the eternal Word of God, the Word of God is the living Word of God. Can I tell you, it comes alive in our heart and in our life when we begin to read it and we begin to apply it and we begin to wrap our lives around it and it begins to live in us and through us, that's how we see these promises of God's Amen. word fulfilled in our life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I am certain that because I place such a high value on trying to be his reflection to this world, so that people in this world can come to know him personally, that he'll always be there and his word will always be there for me. Amen. Can I tell you something? I'm also certain that he knows about our todays. Not only does he know about our yesterdays, not only does he know about our tomorrows, but he knows about our todays right now where we're at. Can I tell you something? If we're discouraged today, he's here to lift us up, to give us encouragement. If we're sick in body today, he's here to heal us. If we have a need, he's here to provide for us. Whatever we have need of, I am certain. Why? Because I'm going to tell you something. Remember what I said early on about what the word certain means? 
It means it's something that is is, is of a, as a surety beyond any doubt. Well, let me tell you something. I've came too far. I've seen too much, and I've experienced too much that you can never make me believe that His Word is not true. Amen. I have seen it yes. with my own eyes. I have experienced it in my own life. I know what I know what I know because it's real deep down in my soul. And I am certain today. Oh, my friend, let me tell you, I am certain that he loved you. I am certain that he has a plan for you. I am certain that his plan includes him blessing and prospering you. Why? Because his word says so. How many come here today with something that you need help with? Amen. An issue in your life, a problem, maybe not feeling real well, something that you may have said, well, just, I, I, I just, I, I, I need prayer. Can I tell you this morning, I am certain that you're not here by accident, and I'm certain that he wants to answer your prayer this morning. All it takes is a simple act of faith. Whatever you may have need of this morning, you may want to stand there for someone else. But whatever you have need of this morning, whatever your desire may be, I'm certain the Lord can meet whatever need you might have. It may be the healing of a spouse or a loved one. It may be deliverance. It may be provision. It can be any number of things. He knows what you have need of. He's already given us the word to take care of and cover. If you'll get up right now from where you're at and make your way up here to the front, we're going to pray together. And we're going to believe God together. And I am certain we will leave this place changed and victorious. Yes. Will you come this morning? Will you come this morning? Will you come this morning? Church, let's come pray for this. Let's come pray for me. My Lord God, you see the love of his husband for his wife. Lord, she couldn't be here this morning because she's hurting in her body. My Lord God, by your stripes, she is healed. I am certain this morning of the promise and the guarantee of your word. Your word that is the first authority. Your word that is the final authority. Your word that is the only authority. By your stripes, she is healed today. In Jesus' name. We are certain of that by faith. We are certain of that by faith. Lord God, we stand on the promises of your word. We stand on the promises of your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Holy Lord God, you see this wife standing in for her husband that she loves. Lord God, he, he's hurting this morning. He, 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 he needs a touch in his body right now. And I am certain for that healing virtue to touch him right now where he's at. My Lord, he's already sent me a text this morning wanting to be here, but just couldn't be here because of the pain in his body. But I am certain beyond any shadow of doubt that you're able to touch him. That even as we speak right now, that the healing virtue is going out to him and touching his body. My Lord God, to give him the healing that he needs. Oh, my Lord, it wouldn't surprise me that when Mary gets home, he's not skipping around the living room. My Lord God of heaven, fully completely restored. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Mommy God. My Lord God of heaven, all of this. You see this mama standing in for her son. My 
Lord God, there's a need right here that you know all about. And there's a need right here, Lord God, that you can take charge and take care of. And we stand together by faith, believing. I am certainly on the shadow of a doubt. What your word has decreed, what your word has declared, that if two shall agree as touching any one thing, it shall be done. And you know his need right now. And I am certain today, oh God, that you're ministering to that need right now. Speaking to that heart, ministering to that heart. Holy Spirit, you might have to turn up the fire a little bit. Next, that's a little bit to get his attention. But I know that you are able. And we're believing you this morning. We're believing you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Lord God of heaven. This morning, I pray for my wife. Yes, Lord. Yes. My Lord God, you know the hurtiness yes. in her arm right now. Thank you. Thank you. I pray the healing virtue yes. of Jesus yes. Christ yes. touch her body right now. Yes. My yes. Lord God, remove not only the pain, yes. but the source of the pain. What the, where the pain's coming from. And I am yes. certainly on any shadow of a doubt to my Lord God, as we act upon your word and as we anoint uh, with all this day and we do what your word tells us to do and we're agreeing and we're believing, my Lord God, in faith believing, I am certain for a healing for her body right now. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My Lord God, there are those under the sound of my voice this morning. They may not be in the sanctuary. They may be with us through virtual church. But by faith right now, you know their needs. You know their hurts. You know their hearts. You know their needs. And Lord, by faith right now, we reach out to them. And we pray for them as well that you would touch them and meet their needs. My Lord God. Lord, there's one in particular that you just laid on my heart, and I'm not going to call her name. But she's having a difficulty with vaping, trying to break it. And I curse yes, this addiction right yes, now yes, in yes, Jesus' name. Yes, I speak yes, against this. Give her complete yes, and total yes, deliverance yes, from yes, this right now hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Yes, Praise God. Amen. Praise Thank God. You, Lord. Thank you. Praise God. I am certain yes. that he still answers prayer, aren't yes. you? Yes. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.